Hello and welcome to Indian Standard Time, a show that speaks to global leaders and thinkers, to people who have made their mark on the sands of time. Today I'm in conversation with Alexander Kadakin, Russia's ambassador to India and an old friend of our country. Ambassador Kadakin, welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. Thank you. Ambassador, I'd like to start by asking you, you've, you've been an old friend of India, you've served here for many years earlier and now, of course, in your capacity as ambassador. In the new India, we have a new government. Uh, Narendra Modi is our new prime minister. What do you make of the Indo-Russian relationship in this new era? Jyoti, you know, uh, well, we have been watching India for many years, for decades. And we have seen and we do see how India is steadily and uh, gradually becoming a great power. Mm -hmm. And it happened uh, irrespective of the government who was in power. Okay. Whether it was Congress or BGP. We have had very productive period of cooperation with the BGP party. In what way? Well, uh, first of all, the uh, historic uh, declaration on strategic partnership was mm -hmm. signed by Vajpayee and Putin. Okay. This is, is, this is 2000 that, uh, and 2000, October 2000. All right. Well, that is why we do not, uh, well, we want India to be strong. Mm -hmm. We do want India to be a great power. Okay. We do want to see India as a superpower. Mm -hmm. And we have been doing everything for that. So in what way? Can you tell us, um, the viewers, what is it? I know, you know, the old relationship between the Soviet Union and India was a very special one for India. The new Russia has been around for the past 22 years. But in, in the last few years, for example, when you've been ambassador, what, what has changed in the India-Russia relationship? Many things have changed. Mm -hmm. Many things have changed. Say the top three, the most, the most important ones. The most important ones were, tell me, uh, name me the country. Okay. Which would easily give for rent a nuclear submarine to another country. All right. So... You will not find such country in the world. So India's leased a nuclear submarine from you, okay? Then you take Kudankulam. Mm -hmm. These are the nuclear reactors in uh, Tamil Nadu, all right? But two two reactors in Kudankulam. Uh, right two now. reactors, but we do have the uh, roadmap uh, to construct from uh, 14 to 16 reactors in the country. So, so let, me, let me ask you about this, Ambassador, since we are talking about uh, the Kudam Kulam reactors. I believe that there has been an agreement recently, a few weeks ago only, between India and Russia, that two more reactors, two more civil nuclear reactors will be uh, sold by the Russians to India in Kudam Kulam. Is that correct? Yes, but they will not be sold, but they will be constructed together. They will together. be constructed, okay. Together. So is that, is that correct? The technical agreement has been signed. All right. That's what I can say. Okay. But now, but now, ex now, if you can just explain a little bit about how this has happened, because in the wake of the nuclear liability law in 2010, does this mean that, that Russia will accept supplier damages in the unlikely event of a nuclear accident? Well, God forbid. God forbid, of course. God forbid. Sure. We do not think it will happen. Okay, absolutely. What we do not like, yeah. what we do not like, and I will tell you for sure, just the other day, three days ago or four days ago, there were Indian engineers who just opened the valve mm -hmm. and the, 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 well, very high temperature part. Okay. Uh, steam. Uh -huh. Steam came out. All right. And they were injured. I see. And all of a sudden, I read in the newspapers that it raises the question of Russian. So you're, you're upset that, that Russian equipment or Russian training or the Russians themselves are being blamed for 
for the for Indian the engineers' are inability not, to uh, the Russians are not to be blamed for that steam leakage. All right. So is it is we, it faulty training or is it faulty equipment? What is it? Well, it 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 was normal equipment, but they should not have opened it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So you think the training should be better? They should yes. be. Yes. Okay. So you are confirming that that Russia will will construct two more reactors at Kudamkulan. Russia will construct 14 more reactors. No, but in Kudamkulan, just to in ask Kudam you this, Kulam, uh, Ambassador. two more and plus two more. But how does this work? Because in the wake of the civil, civil nuclear liability law, uh, and I just asked you, so are you willing to accept this liability? God forbid that there is an incident, but God forbid. Well, we have signed a technical agreement which gives... Um, which clears the way to build two more. So explain, explain to me, how does this work? Ask your atomic energy. No, no, I'll ask my atomic energy, no, but ask since your I atomic have the Russian energy. ambassador in front of me. <laughs> so, okay, tell me, tell me something. Jody, I, 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 why should I disclose something which has been kept secret between us? Okay, just, you know, just for the sake of understanding how this has happened. In 1989, which is a long, long time ago, your former president, Mikhail Gorbachev, and India's former prime minister, Rajiv Gandhi, signed an agreement. This was in 1989. On that was the path-breaking thing. A path-breaking agreement. Uh, when, when really a pivotal moment, if you like, in, in the history of our countries. Now, subsequent to that, the Soviet Union breaks up. Russia is a new country. A lot of changes take place in India. Over the years, over the last 24 or 25 years, Russia has been extremely helpful on the nuclear side, supplying nuclear fuel and now constructing these nuclear three reactors. Three times. Yeah. Three times. Okay. Which three times? Supplying nuclear fuel three times. All right. So supplying nuclear fuel three times and now constructing these reactors in Kudam Kulam. So can I understand or that... These two new reactors will be grandfathered to that 1989 agreement. Yes and no. When you say yes, how, how do you mean yes? Yes, the grandfathering, that these two new reactors will be, will be connected to the 1989 agreement? You know, a technical agreement has been um, formulated in such a way that yeah. it makes it possible to continue construction. Okay. The, to continue and to continue construction of unit number three and unit number four. All right. It has been formulated in such a way which makes it possible that opens the road to construct these two new units. That is all. Okay. So I'm going to put it in my words, Ambassador, which is that the 1989 agreement between India and uh, Russia, formerly the Soviet Union, allows the, the, the construction of new reactors and the new reactors will be grandfathered to that agreement. Those are my words, but I'm just asking you for confirmation. Yes. Okay. So hold that thought, Ambassador. I'm going to take a very quick break, but I'll be back very soon. Welcome back. You're watching Indian Standard Time, and I'm in conversation with Alexander Kadakin, Russia's ambassador to India. Ambassador Kadakin, uh, before the break, we were talking about India's sort of very special relationship with Russia. But I want to ask you about India's new prime minister, Narendra Modi, and Russia's president, Vladimir Putin. Do you think they're sort of similar personalities, go-getters, you know, Putin likes to ride a horse. I mean, Narendra Modi doesn't like to ride a horse, but he's this go-getting type of person. What do you say? Well, I feel, I feel that there will be very good chemistry mm -hmm. between the how, two. How do you feel that? I'm sure, I'm sure there will be good chemistry between the two. Because, well, um, the new Prime Minister of India is a person who wants India to go strong. Yeah. Our president wants Russia to be strong. Mm -hmm. In this they coincide. In this they coincide. That's why I do not, I don't foresee any um, differences or any problems between them. Then, you know, uh, 
Russia has been having very good relations mm -hmm. with Narendra Modi. Okay, in what way? <laughs> well, you know, uh, Gujarat is a sister state of Astrakhan region. Right. But has anything happened? I mean, yes, no. yes, many exchanges of delegations took place. Delegations from Astrakhan regions came to Gujarat. They were participating in vibrant Gujarat exhibitions every year. And Prime Minister Modi, your former Chief Minister, the Narendra Prime Modi Minister, has been the to Prime Minister Russia. Modi, who was uh, the Chief Minister of Gujarat, he was uh, on very good terms with our Consulate General in Bombay, in Mumbai. Mm -hmm. Well, then. Has he met Putin? Then, uh, no. Has he, he hasn't no, met Putin. No, so no, this no, will, no, no, no. So it, will be, it will be there first. First time, okay. It will be there first. And then, you know, we have not blacklisted him, unlike other countries. He visited Russia thrice, three times. Okay. You have not black. Russia has not blacklisted. Never ever. Narendra Modi. Never ever. Okay. You're referring to the Americans, I imagine. Well, maybe. Okay. So you think that this might be an advantage in... We in have a very important project in Gujarat, okay. which, is, um, which is between the two major private companies. Mm -hmm. Sibur Reliance, and Reliance Sibur. from here and Sibur from Russia. All right. Which will produce tires for India's aviation, mm -hmm. for India's cars, etc. That is a very important, important and, and project. Yet, and yet, Ambassador, although in the defense and military side there, there is an ongoing and very strong relationship, you mentioned that India is leasing a nuclear submarine. There are other sort of projects on the anvil like the fifth generation aircraft, etc. But having said that, the economic relationship is so poor. It's barely a few billion dollars, about 10 or 11 billion dollars. That's it's nothing. It's 11.3. Yeah, that's Jyoti. nothing at all. Jyoti, it's 11.3. But that's nothing. nothing. It's, it's very, nothing. very, very small. Uh, it's nothing. That, which, uh, that is which gives me uh, not only headache, but heartache also, because 11.3 is nothing. Okay. I agree with you. So, so what is the real problem? Well... I think the real problem is that Indian business people are not aggressive in the Russian market. Okay. Why are the Chinese aggressive? Why are the Tur Turks, Turkey aggressive on our market? Well, for example, I would prefer to buy Indian shirts mm -hmm. in Russia, but there are no Indian shirts in Russia. But one of the big but the Indian shirts are the best in the world. But one of the biggest problems is that Indian businessmen or Indian tourists are not given visas. It's very difficult to get a Russian visa. No, no, it's, it's the so, price it's so, of it's gold, so ambassador. Easy. It's so no, easy. it's not. It's very difficult to get a Russian. It's the, it's like the price of gold. How come? Yes, it's How true. Come? No, 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 yeah. Georgie, no. Okay. No, it's so easy. So, and we have, so we are you assuring have, me? We have signed a, an agreement to, to simplify visa, uh, uh, visas for Indian and Russian uh, people. Tourists, tourists as well? Tourists, yes. And, and also tourists. business how, people? How, how can you imagine 150,000 Russians coming to Goa? Okay. But not vice versa. In one year, in one year. And the same thing applies to Indians. So are you assuring me that... Indian tourists are welcome in Russia. That yes, it's, of course. That it's easy to of get a course, Russian visa. Of course. That Indian business people are welcome in Russia. Of course. Give me a ring if uh, somebody has a problem with visas. Give okay. me a ring. All right. I'll take you up on that, Ambassador. Yes, please. But, but I'm going to come back. Because I do not think there is any problem whatsoever. Okay. But so are you then saying that in the new Narendra Modi era, perhaps one of the issues that both countries should focus on would be to improve the economic relationship. Trade. Trade and Trade. investment, I would Trade. imagine. Trade and investment. And uh, I think we, we, we have so many, uh, so many projects in the offing. Mm -hmm. We have so many of them okay. that we have to continue. We have to, 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 to proceed with them. So has, has, uh, um, has Putin spoken to, uh, to Mr. Modi yet? Not yet. 
Okay, and not is yet. It, all right, but they have. I know that most, they have. Most been, probably, it will be on the twenty third. Okay, but but there has been there but, has been uh, an exchange of messages. There, there, there was a message of greetings to Mr. Modi uh, on his being uh, on his winning the elections. Right, and and, and that it was it was three days ago. Right, and it was a very warm, very warm message in which uh, Mr. Putin said that we never forget that it was during. Vajpayee's time, mm -hmm. during BGP time, that the historic declaration was signed. Of strategic partnership. Of strategic partnership. So uh, you hope that uh, the new prime minister will pay a visit to Russia very soon? Well, I don't know how they will decide because okay. now it is Mr. Putin's time <laughs> turn to come to India. Okay. Because we have uh, each and we have annual summits. Mm -hmm. Last time in October, Prime Minister Manmohan right. Singh went to Moscow. Mm -hmm. Well, this time it is Mr. Putin's turn to come, turn to to come here. Okay. But if they decide otherwise, I don't know. Okay, uh, okay uh, Ambassador, hold your thought and I'm going to take a very quick break. Please don't go away. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. You're watching Indian Standard Time, and I'm in conversation with Alexander Kadakin, Russia's ambassador to India. Ambassador Kadakin, I'd like to ask you about the about Crimea, actually, and the so-called annexation, or what the world describes as the annexation of Crimea by the Russians on the 18th of March. What what happens now? Well. Judge, you should not call it annexation. It was just the return, reunification okay. of Crimea with its motherland. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, it is a very... Not many people here in India or uh, elsewhere in the world, they know well the real history of all that. Mm -hmm. The Russian Empire fought three wars mm -hmm. with Turkey. The Russian Empire also fought wars with the Shah uh, or uh, the, 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 the Khan of uh, Crimea, well, to, to, to take it back. So now and at last, in 1783, mm -hmm. it was just taken by Catherine the Great. Okay. So but now Putin, who is also this look, look, but very you know, powerful you know, and strong you know, leader. Uh, Georgie, Crimea has never ever been a part of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. It was just the whimsy of Khrushchev. Okay. In 1954, when three tercentenary, when 300 years of Ukraine's joining Russia was celebrated, and he just. He just said, I give you Ukraine. Right. So now, now Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, who is this strong l president of Russia, has taken it back. And no, he has not taken it back. It was by the ballot All right. of uh, the overwhelming majority. 97% voted, by the referendum voted, in voted in the referendum for in returning Ukraine. to the okay. Russian So now my question to you, Ambassador, is that, as you know, the West is very agitated about this. And they are determined to, within quotes, punish the Russian president. How do you think the Russians are going to react to this? How are well, they reacting? You know, all, their, all their punishments uh, are inconsequential. Mm -hmm. But this means that Russia will move east towards China? So it's inconsequential, you're saying? No, but why should we, why should we move somewhere else? We just, uh, it, you know, it was a, a historic return of Crimea to the fall no, of I'm Russia. asking that because of the Western response and the Western reaction to this uh, move of the Crimeans to return, as you're saying, to, the, to Mother Russia, is the Russian president, is Putin and the, and the people, are you moving or would you like now to move much more east, which is towards China? Why should we move east or west or anywhere else? Why should we move? We shall move to India. Okay. India's reaction was very well balanced and very uh, objective and very nice. Why India abstained. India abstained and the, at, the, at, the, at the UN General Assembly voting. But okay. India, India 
on the whole took a very subjective, uh, uh, very, very, very well balanced position. Mm -hmm. But India did abstain, which indicates that India was not wholly comfortable with the fact of the so-called annexation or the so-called return of Crimea. No, I wouldn't say it. No? I wouldn't, I wouldn't qualify it that way, no. Okay, how would you qualify it? Is if, if, if India abstained, it doesn't mean at all that India was not very happy with, with what has happened, no. Okay. You think India was, was okay with it? I think it was absolutely correct. And half, half the votes were abstained. No, but do you think India was okay with the fact? Absolutely. Yes? Absolutely. But do you, did you feel that some Indians were not too happy with what happened because of the analogy that we are making inside India with Kashmir? No, but I would not compare it to Kashmir. No? No. Why no. not? How can we compare it with Kashmir? Well, in the sense that, you know, Kashmir within the, uh, in the international framework is disputed territory. And Crimea now is the subject of a hot and contested dispute between Russia and, uh, but and un Ukraine. Uh, but unlike in Kashmir, there, is, there was no shot in Crimea. There was nobody killed. Okay. Not a single person was killed. Mm -hmm. Crimea just returned to Russia. That is all. Okay. And you feel that... No, it wouldn't be correct to compare these things. All right. But it, you, and it, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be correct. Okay. Because, you know, there was no line of control uh -huh. in Crimea. Right. There was no international border mm -hmm. in Crimea. It just belonged, erroneously, by mistake, it belonged to the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And then it came back to Russia. That is all. And... And I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it would be correct to compare. All right. And you feel that the Indians are behind the Russians every step of, of the way on no, this one? No. Our president has very highly assessed the position of India, mm -hmm. which uh, said that uh, Russia has legitimate, legitimate interests. Yes, that former National Security there, Advisor yes, Shiv, yes, Shiv Shankar Menon yes, used yes, that phrase. Yes. That Russia has legitimate interests in, yes, in, 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 yes, in the Crimea. I think that is enough and that is good. Okay. Because, you know, uh, if, if, if you remember, and I remember I was a young man here mm -hmm. when the Bangladesh war took place. Right. We used four times veto power in the United States. I nations, think India remembers that very Nation well. Nation Security Council, yes. four times when they wanted to say that India was an aggressor. So India is repaying the compliment, is that right? Well, maybe. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, I think that's, that's a very interesting sort of comment and observation on your part. But let me bring you back, Ambassador, to what, in my view, is Russia's growing sort of closeness to China. What do you make of that? Gazprom wants to sign this multi-billion mega deal uh, to sell gas to the Chinese. We are ready to sign it with India also. You are ready to sell gas to yes. India? Okay. And there was even an idea to send it all over the Himalayas here. But that's not, that's not likely, isn't it? I mean, that's a bit of a stretch. Why not? Why not? But would you, but this interest on the part of, of the Russian gas company, Gazprom, to sign this sort of mega deal with, you with know, the Chinese. You know, what, what I will tell you as to a friend, mm -hmm. we have our own niche in our relations with China, of which you are very well aware. All right. We have our own niche in relations with India, mm -hmm. of which you are, you are also very well aware. Well, these are separate things. But the fact is Separate that things. And then you should not forget, forget that we have thousands long border mm -hmm. with China. Thousands of kilometers long border. But should India be Thousands of kilometers. kilometers long border. But should India be concerned that the two big powers, Russia and China, no. are coming together? No, 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 no. Not at all? No, not at all. You because, don't think there's any because, place because we for want any the three, apprehension? We want the three powers, mm. Russia, China, 
and India to work closer together. Okay. And though we 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 we, we are now not uh, um, how should I say we are not political or we are not that ideological, but it was Lenin who said that if the three of us are together, the whole world will keep silent. On this very interesting note, Ambassador Kadakin, thank you so much for speaking to Rajya Sabha TV. <laughs> I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. Next week, we will have another global leader or thinker. Till then, goodbye and good luck. <laughs>